Hello, everyone. This is JD Calderon, and this is Indie Comics Explained. And yet again, I brought on another fantastic group of independent comic book creators. We're a little, we're a little uh, short today, but that's okay. Some people couldn't make it. That's fine. Good luck to those guys. I mean, you know, seriously, good luck to you guys. I, I hope you guys are feeling better, or your family is feeling better. But in a pinch, I brought out a pinch hitter. What's My up, pinch man? hitter. There you go. Yes, sir. Hey, everybody. Am I supposed to introduce myself? I'm Randy Zimmerman, yes, Arrow Comics, uh, Indie Comics Network. I do uh, two shows, one early Friday morning called Comics by Night, where we show off great comic book stuff, and another one on Sunday morning uh, called Sunday Funnies, where we show off a bunch of oddball stuff that we love and inspires us to keep uh, working in this wonderful world of comics. So you can see all my stuff over at arrowcomics.store, everything that's, that's available. And listen... You know, normally Jay's sitting over there. Mm -hmm. This is an improvement. Vast, <laughs> vast improvement. <laughs> Thanks you for know, the flattery. You know, no, that's, listen, what it was he used to say? Learn, time to learn something. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, if, you know, you listen to Jay long enough, you just lose IQ points. But anyway, let's move is that on. What it is? All right. <laughs> yeah, I've listened to him a lot. That's why I think I've gotten dumber over the last few years. But anyway, uh -oh. um, <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Jay's cool. Um, Max, what's Max. up? What's up, Max? Please introduce you? yourself, sir. I'm Max Deville, uh, founder of Atrocity Press. You can find me at atrocitypress.com. It's got all our social media links, all of our store stuff, all of our news comes out there first, like a week before it hits social media. It'll come out on the website. So just drop by, check it out, and get everything Atrocity Press. Okay, cool. And we have Sean Wood. Sean. What's up, Sean? How you doing? Uh, my name is Sean Wood. I have The Fog Within number one on Kickstarter right now. It's my first book, so I'm fresh into this. All right, cool. And, and te technically, uh, our other co-host or co-co-host or however you want to phrase it, uh, it, it takes hey. a little bit for <laughs> it takes a little bit for me to put this book together. Hello. Hey there. <laughs> Fashionably yeah. late. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Fashionably late, uh, or 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 uh, I come in exactly when I am supposed to. <laughs> there you are. Yes. <laughs> A wizard is never late. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. yeah. We're all and we're all wizards here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you, Do you notice, like she's there, and how well lit she is. Oh, I, 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 that <laughs> look, this is all delivery. You think, you think I could just come on YouTube all willy nilly? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, anyway, Daphne, please introduce yourself. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Daphne Lage, and I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, and comic book artist from New York. I have been self publishing comics since 1992 with this goof right here. <laughs> And I am known for our furry fantasy adventure tall tales, which returns to Kickstarter in uh, 2024. And I'm currently I am known for my mature audience's medieval fantasy drama, Eager Raven, Heir of the First Unicorn, which is currently on Kickstarter on its last four or five days. Um, I don't remember which. I don't usually check it on the weekends. Um, I am also co-host with Nita Lanning on the Rage Into the Vlog show every Monday and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on the Indie Comics Network. Uh, and in the meantime, you can read both my comics online at Tall Tales, T A I L S online.com and egoworks.com, E G O W O R K S. And you can also check out all my videos on how I make my comics here on YouTube at my own channel at Daphne Lage Art. That's L A G E, by the way. Very good. Very good. We should get Einstein his own camera. No, probably... no, we will not give Einstein his own camera. <laughs> No, we will not. I said is the bird in the background. That's yeah, that's the that's those noises in the background. So if you're just joining us, uh, yeah, if you hear anything weird in the background, it's a parrot. <laughs> so. It's a parrot. You we, do not probably, need to change your batteries. In yeah, your we'd probably, right there. yeah, we'd probably get a lot more views. Uh, <laughs> just from the just from people watching the damn parrot. Uh, anyway. So you'd be surprised. There's uh, people that watch these otters at the 
the San Diego Zoo on Twitch. Yeah. And they yeah. get like they get hundreds of viewers at a time. I have, uh, yeah, it's like on Twitch, I, I watch a, a a stream of just chickens chilling in someone's yard. <laughs> it's a chicken <laughs> chill stream. Yes, yeah. it really is. It really okay. is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. With Einstein, it would probably just be him trying to like, you know, trying to look all psychotic the way he looks all the time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's start. Let, let's start. So, you know, the, the show question is, is Kickstarter too big? Of a, is it too is it too large of a strategy? Too large of our business strategy, right? I mean, that's one of those things that I, that I was thinking about. It took, I had to cancel a campaign. I goofed up. I canceled the campaign. It took them ten days for them to approve my next campaign, right? And during that period, I was like, "Damn it, this is taking too long. What's going on? What if they never approve it, right?" So I had to sit back and really think about, you know. What, what what would happen if they didn't approve it, right? Is this too big of a portion of my business, right? So there it is. That's the question. Max, what are your thoughts on it? You can make it too much of your business. I mean, it's possible. I mean, you can just run Kickstarters and that's all you do. And mm -hmm. then it's probably too much of your business because it's your only avenue of, 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 of accessing your, your audience. Now, if you got your own website, you got your own other, other digital platforms and stuff like that, that you can hit up, you know, you have to, it's don't put your eggs in all in one basket type of thing really is what I'm trying to say, you know, for diversify your comic and your properties as much as you possibly can. I mean, there are, there are new crowdfunding platforms that are coming out all the time, so you can like you can explore working with some of those. Um, but I mean, the the fact of the matter is that Kickstarter's king, so you got to use yeah. it. And if you don't, you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, it's 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 just where it's where the people are right now. It's right. it's the it's the crescent wrench of mm -hmm. of, of of comic book crowdfunding. I mean, it's like everyone says, "I'm going to run a Kickstarter oh. on Indiegogo." You know, I hate when it does that automatically. <laughs> right. and they'll say like, "I'm going to run a Kickstarter on Indiegogo" because everyone just says Kickstarter. They see they see Kickstarter as crowdfunding. They they so they've they've made that. Because, I mean, a Crescent Wrench isn't really a Crescent Wrench. It's an adjustable wrench. But the brand name was Crescent. So everyone calls it a Crescent Wrench. So the brand name is is Kickstarter. So everyone calls it a Kickstarter, no matter what platform it's being run on. At least people that don't really, pound really gorilla. know. 800-pound gorilla of crowdfunding. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Sean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, so being new into it, I don't have anything else yet. This is what gave me the idea that I could do this to at least start. It's definitely not the only thing that I want to do in the future, but Kickstarter wasn't around. I probably would never have made my book because it costs so much you know, to start as a writer. Um, yeah, that, that's the only thing that, that made it possible for me to start the whole process. So. Fair enough, and yes, uh, we agree. It is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is definitely not cheap. It doesn't get any cheaper. It no. just gets a little more, a little easier because you've made some money from a different project that you can right. throw at the new project. <laughs> right. yeah. So it doesn't cost as much this time, but it yeah. still costs. <laughs> yeah, it's not as painful. It's just painful, but not as. Yeah, painful. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Randy, what are your thoughts? I completely agree with Max, except for the uh, Kickstarter being the only game in town. No, no, said, the oh, biggest no. game in town. Biggest, biggest game in town. Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest but game you, in town. You do have to spread yourself off uh, into as many different areas and not necessarily platforms. I mean, it, every uh, source of revenue that you can possibly generate is still money coming in, no matter how small it is. You're still getting some money and you're putting a foot in the door in a different direction. So uh, 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent for alternative distributors. You had Frank Forte on here uh, yesterday yep. or not yesterday, last week. He had a ton, mm -hmm. ton of great information and different sources to go look for and look through for uh, uh, other means uh, to, to get income in. And there there will be a lot more in the days to come. You just have to uh, keep your uh, right. eyes open. Spinner and, and racks are stay coming on the back. Workout. Spinner, Spinner racks, racks are coming, are back. coming back. Yep. I mean, they really are. I mean, they just, are. they're coming back in more adult venues like dispensaries and stuff like that. But they're still coming back, and that's 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 a good thing. Because well, comics those... have evolved since they were out too, so they've, yeah. they've gotten more. But I mean, adult you can get well, them. So. You can get them into that. I mean, that's what they were originally for, mm -hmm. anyways. I mean, but you know, you get it back into the into the hands of the adults with the money. Yeah. There you go. There you are. That's it. Now and we're joined by uh, Guido Martinez. What's up? What's up, Guido? How you doing? Can you hear us? Hello. Uh oh. Let's see. He's uh -oh. there. He's, I think yeah, he's frozen. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's not muted on our end, so that's that's something yeah. going on on his end. Yeah. Hi. Your sound is not coming through. Well, there we go. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. Sorry, I came in late. I'm fresh off uh, putting the kids to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's fine. Uh, Guido, please uh, introduce yourself. Can you yourself. hear me? I think I, I yeah. think there's. Yep. We well, there's a delay. Uh, thanks. There's so definitely I'm, a delay. I'm Guido Martinez. Yeah. 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 There, there uh, must okay. be a delay. Uh, I'm going to give, give uh, just in case a bit of of time to make up for the delay. Uh, well, my name is Guido Martinez. Um, I'm a writer and letterer for comic books um, lately uh, my my creator own series is being published by Philbo publishing um, you can find the first collected trade right now on Kickstarter it's called night and collected trade compiles uh, issues one to four that make up the first story arc uh, if you need to know about me I'm from Buenos Aires Argentina and well, I I will do my best to uh, speak English as clearly as possible. <laughs> and if you notice a weird accent, uh, that's that's probably it. <laughs> so, well, I hope I I didn't miss anything important. I didn't want to interrupt, but here I am now interrupting you guys. So, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. What what Listen. else can we say? <laughs> Exactly. Says we all have weird accents. I'm from New York, so it doesn't get much weirder than that, you know. The whole cavalcade so. of weird accents here. Exactly. <laughs> from from the Midwest. Oh. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So Guido, the, so I have a question for you. So everybody was just going around the table or around the the panel. Um, do you feel that Kickstarter is too big of a section of our business, right? That it's too important a portion of our business. Um for us to have right and you know is there something else we could do about well um uh, yeah uh personally yes i i will say that it's it, it is part of a big part of our business because it's it's the easiest way to to sell a comic book and to uh, get funds that allow uh, not not just uh, the production of the book, but also to print extra copies, right? Because at least in my case, I I produce the book with funds that I get from uh, lettering other books and and doing some scripts uh, just on demand for people, and well, I put all of that into producing the book. But eventually, it's it's not enough. Uh, so I I need a, uh, to find a way to sell the book even before it, it is done. Luckily for me, that's that part is done for this for this trade. The book is entirely produced. But with previous issues, it was necessary because otherwise, I would have to. Uh, put together a lot more capital to produce one issue and then 
then start uh, start looking for uh, for alternatives to sell it. Kickstarter allows both uh, to uh, s to get uh, money in advance to let you produce the book and to sell it. You make your first sales as well as uh, as well as collecting the money in advance and allowing you to produce. Also, if you want to sell it uh, for for small publishers, it's hard to I don't know get into diamond easiest easiest uh, outlet for sales would be to attend cons, uh, get a table and and sell. But of course, you need funds to print, not just to produce, but to print a batch of books. So Kickstarter definitely helps with all that. And it's it's great because it not only connects you to to potential customers that are just uh, that are in at a con that stop by your table. It connects you to uh, potential customers that can be anywhere in the world. Of course, uh, it's not always easy, but but yeah, it's a large customer database and it's uh, uh, well, not database. It's a large customer base, but yeah. it's um, it's it's great and it's well. Although lately, uh, lately there has been a significant drop in in backers from Kickstarter. At least it's what I've noticed on on the projects I've been involved, and I've also noticed. Uh, I've also been told that. Backer numbers are starting to go down across multiple projects, uh, but the, it's still the largest customer base and uh, the first customer base that, as creators, many mm -hmm. many have access to. So, yeah, yeah, the e economic downturn is really percent yes. The economic downturn is really kind of starting to show itself on Kickstarter, if you ask me. Yeah, it's it's weird because I mean you know Daphne and I both have campaigns, but I know you got one running, right, Max? Yep. Guido's got one. Um, Daphne's seen a slowdown. I've seen a slowdown. If Jay was here, he would he would have probably mentioned it as well, right? It's just weird, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Although ironically, Kickstarter in and I guess like in a presentation they did at San Diego Comic Con, yeah. they said that actually more projects are getting uh, um, funded on Kickstarter. So now to do a comic book Kickstarter, you have a 75% chance of funding as opposed to 65, I guess, like a year or so ago. Um, so that might also be a part of it too. It's like, yeah, more, more campaigns being funded might mean that the money is getting spread out a little bit more at the expense of everybody else. True. Sure. Uh, could or it could be more people are putting their goals at five hundred dollars just to well that's get, true too. It could could be that game, people, game got the algorithm. <laughs> people got a little smarter. Yes. <laughs> I mean Neil Neil Gaiman yes, is up that, there, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. At two, there is. Almost two point five million. Yep. Right, with thirty one thousand backers. Like how do we tap into that market? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. big question. It's like I, I don't even want ten percent. If I can get one percent yeah. of his crowd, we need to be Neil Gaiman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, but you know, uh, Neil's putting yeah. his time. Well, right? uh, He's, uh, that's he... that's record-breaking numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's sorry. Yeah, because um, it's it it tickles the algorithm yeah, yeah. when when you can say that you're two hundred, three hundred percent, yeah, um, mm -hmm. funded rather than if you ask for all your money all at once and you're like, oh, you're a hundred percent funded, yay, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? So, so Daphne, do you have yeah. any thoughts on the question? Um, well, probably for me, I, I mean, I probably do depend a little too much on Kickstarter. Um, but for somebody who's really not interested in any of the other distribution models that are available out there, including going on other platforms, um, I'm actually looking outside of that. Um, mm -hmm. to kind of like mix things up a bit for myself. Um, I reactivated an Etsy store that I had since 2015. And um, I, I closed it because I didn't know what to do with it. Um, and I'm going to 
experiment with not only selling comics on there, but just like, just like kind of getting into like separate items, like getting into like maybe getting into like stickers and stationery and such, so something separate, but it's still an extension of what I do. Um, in the end, I mean, for me, Kickstarter, I, I really had to think about like why I was on Kickstarter to begin with. And um, in the end, it's just giving me an opportunity to finish this series or to finish my comics just in general. So that's just how I look at it. Um, all the other new platforms, I played around with Backer Kit for a little bit. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen Crowdfunder, I've seen, you know, Fund My Comic and, and, and even like Indiegogo. It's like those platforms require you to have an audience already where mm -hmm. on Kickstarter, you can actually kind of come in not knowing anything and you can actually build an audience from Kickstarter. Um, I wouldn't recommend it being your sole build, but, um, and, and honestly, I just don't feel like I have the energy to do that from scratch on every platform yeah. <laughs> that's out yeah. there. So I'd rather just try to do something different and use Kickstarter to just fund the rest of my series. Yeah, Kickstarter definitely has a much better promotional algorithm than any other yeah. mm -hmm. um, crowdfunding site out there. I mean, it it's really good at determining what you like when it yeah. comes to your comics and, and, and suggesting stuff to you at the bottom. I mean, right. If you look at your Kickstarter analytics, it always shows you it's like, Hey, everything came from emails from Kickstarter and Kickstarter. That's where it all, all your, all your, all your, all your, <laughs> yeah. your, your traffic came from. That's where everyone. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, the trick is trying to get those people to your other platforms, like to mm -hmm. your website, to your mailing list, and mm -hmm. you know, and and nurturing it from there. Yeah, like I said, I, I asked the question because you know I, I spent this ten day period fretting over how long it's going to take them to approve. If, if there was ever a guy I could say is a Kickstarter addict. <laughs> right, I'm was, the junkie. He was fiending. Yeah. He was yeah. fiending. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Pretty really, much. really. He was Not practically really. doing that. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't I, I, talk to him. You couldn't do anything. Because yeah. all he would obsess about was like, they haven't, <laughs> they, haven't, they, haven't, they haven't proved it yet. They haven't proved it yet. Yep. I mean, <laughs> You know, it, it's one of those things, right? You know, some people, they, they scroll, and that's how they get their little uh, dopamine hits. You know, mm -hmm. whenever I get backed, that's my dopamine hit. So that's that's yeah. how I work. It. I so, leave yeah. mine up. Mine, mine's up all the time on my other monitor. Oh, oh there you no, go. No, no, no. I don't do that. I, don't do that. I check uh, it. I check it. I, I fuck that thing all day long. Yeah. No, no, I'm always always looking at uh -uh. it. It's always yeah. sitting there. I stopped. That I way. stopped doing that. It's it's Couldn't so become an addiction. It was so stressful. No, really, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 It's a good thing I have a day job that won't allow me to hold the phone. So. Also, <laughs> I'd probably be there all the time doing that. No, I check it once a day, and I don't check it on the weekends. That's yeah. why I don't know. I don't know right now as we speak. I'm not even sure how many days I have left. <laughs> I have to. I always, I always try to keep it so I can uh, maintain my my messages and stuff like that that people send me. That way, I, I can I can do that. That's usually what I I try to keep it up for. I the only thing that I know for sure is that they have. They, they have, um, like, preemptively not allowed certain people on, but it's kind of rare. Although, yeah. lately, they have been kicking off campaigns that are, are AI using guys. AI without yeah. admitting that they are. So, yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. kind of what's going on now. But um, they're... On Kickstarter, I don't think there's a shadow ban. I don't think they shadow ban you. They just tell you, hey, you're off the fucking platform. Sorry, bye. Yeah, it's like either one or the other, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just want to prove your project. You're like, sorry, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. And and listen, that's much better than shadow banning. At least you know where you stand. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. None oh. of that shadow banning crap where it's just like, am yeah. I? Yeah. Am I? Why, why is no one back in my project? And then you, you Google search it, and you're like, how come I can't find this thing? Why yeah. can't I find it on the, the Kickstarter search? And 
you know, yeah. they don't do that. And that's yeah, nice no, of them no. enough to where yeah. they don't bother with it because other platforms, such as Indiegogo, will yeah. shadow ban yeah. you. They will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, which is just bizarre. It's just better just not to accept the damn project and just exactly. move yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Really but everybody always, but what, what's funny is, like I said, I spent this 10-day period and it had me thinking, you know, what you know, what if this happens, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go back. I've done Indiegogo's before. I, I, I didn't raise a lot of money, but I did raise some money. So I think I'm going to try it again just to see and maybe try to build up. I may even go to Luke's platform, you know, uh, fund my comic and try something there just to see. Because in the end, I think it is important for us to, like Max said, don't put all our eggs in one basket. You yeah. know, start trying to nurture these other places yep. to see if we can get a real competitor yeah. mm -hmm. to Kickstarter, you know, for, oh, yeah. for this one. Mm -hmm. You know, because, and here's the thing if you could raise 3,000 well, bucks I mean, on one, 1,000 bucks on another, 2,000 bucks on the other, that only helps you out, you know, in it. the end, yep. right? So, you know, if you can. If you can double yes. or triple your money by going on these other platforms, because there are people that don't like buying on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There are people That's that don't like buying thing. on Kickstarter. There are like people yeah. that like, don't like buying on any yeah. go People that right. don't like buying on... Well, what's funny is that Backer Kit was yes. supposed to be the heir apparent. Mm -hmm. And, right. I mean, do, does anybody hear anything about Backer Kit? Mm -hmm. I <laughs> use know? Backer right. Kit for their email capabilities. Right. Yeah. right. That's it. That's that's what I've heard about them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it costs, my comments are not my comments shadow banned. Oh yeah, yeah. it, 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 it costs a hundred dollars, but being I, able I to don't get think so. <laughs> yes. it costs a hundred dollars, but being able to get all of your previous backers as a mailing list mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. been invaluable to this campaign that we're doing right now. It's the first time we've used backer kit for anything like that, and it. It shot us up over goal in 24 hours, which was pretty impressive for this book that we do. I mean, the Ninja Bimbo's book has never, it's never like a huge break the bank, made $20,000 comic book or anything. You know, it's always about an $8,000 book and we're, uh, we're, we're right on target. So I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not upset. <laughs> So well, the, the other thing I think you need to keep in mind is that these platforms yeah. have a tendency, and call me cynical, but I've mm -hmm. seen it happen to too many friends too many times in too many different ways. These platforms always have a tendency of moving that goalpost or changing mm -hmm. their rules yeah. or yep. deciding in a, in, a, in a whim that they're going to add a new policy or whatever that you just don't fit in. Right. So you have right. to almost spread yourself out or at least be aware mm -hmm. of where those other platforms are because tomorrow everything could change. I've, I've seen Amazon do it, yeah. Patreon do it, yeah. YouTube do it. Mm -hmm. It's going all the way down the line and you know that it's happened before. It's going to happen again. Yeah. I mean, if Kickstarter oh. said no more bad girl books. You got to be ready we, for that. Yeah, we'd, be in, we'd all be in trouble. Yeah. Well, I mean, for a little while, I was expecting them to go, oh, it's like, if you're not a celebrity, we're yeah, right. not going to, you know, we're not going to uh, put the algorithm in your favor because that's what happened to YouTube. YouTube mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, like started off on all the small mm -hmm. creators. And then once all these fucking Kardashian wannabes want, you know, came on the scene, they actually changed their algorithm to benefit people who really yeah. didn't need it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when the whole frenzy with Berserker and Keanu Reeves was happening, I was really afraid that that's exactly what was going to happen to Kickstarter. That all of a sudden yeah. it's like, oh, well, you're not Keanu Reeves. So, you know, <laughs> good luck with you. <laughs> the odds are not in your favor. Well, plus they have a bad tendency of throwing in. Now it's Neil, now it's Neil Gaiman or, or yeah. Ryan Pulido. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Plus, they changed czars or controllers. I, yeah, I they did. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you never know when the next one's coming in yeah. is going to decide, well, bad girl books objectify women. I'm not going to carry that. You can't have anything harder than an R rated or a light uh, or a hard oh, uh, yeah, PG 13. That's, that's for sure. And yeah. they're, all of those other books are, are gone. Oh, and, and that could there. easily happen yeah. too. We've seen very platforms. easily on yeah, any we've platform. Seen yeah. Platforms yeah. The thing is, yeah. like, okay, Honestly, sorry. I think we, the built, we built your back. Uh, 
Uh-huh. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. The, the market yeah. for bad girl books is it's too big. If, no, if Kickstarter don't, it's like... happens to ban them, Indiegogo is going to blow up com- completely. Never you know, so. never believe anything is too big to not <laughs> be tinkered with. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Because, like I said, it's like, you know, a lot of platforms, they build they build their foundation on, on pornographers and adult content. And then when they get to a certain point, now it's like, oh, now you're all banned. Yeah. We're not allowed yeah. to, we're, 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 te- we're not allowed to have you guys on here anymore. Yeah. Thanks for all the work you did. Peace yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would ever exactly. think YouTube would start frowning on swearing and explaining? Look, you can't you know, even do. Out of the blue. Uh, you can't even do talk about World War II and mention Hitler by name. You're yeah. talking in context to World War II, whatever it is, yeah. and you you cannot you cannot say the German Chancellor's name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Even though you just it's ridiculous, did. you demonetized yeah. it. Terrible. Right. Well, it's a good Terrible. thing we weren't monetized to begin with. Yeah. This is, I wasn't looking to get that forty cents anyway. Yeah. There you go. Bing, bing. Uh, yeah, so wait, wait, is, this, is this going up on YouTube? Yeah. Is this going yeah. up on YouTube? Because yeah, yeah. You, yeah, this is all you on have, YouTube. You need to yeah. bleep that those out. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, um, oh, yeah, it's yeah, okay. I, I can live without the forty out. cents. It's fine. Uh, You're gonna get a warning. It was uh, worth it. It was worth it. Exactly. Showing Daffy, off some. You got a question? Off, no, sorry. Go well, ahead. you know, so so speaking of um, Neil Gaiman, right? So speaking of Neil Gaiman, so here is the campaign that uh, him and Colleen Duran are running with, I guess, like Terry Pratchett's um, organization or foundation or whatnot. Two point five million dollars, thirty one thousand backers. Okay. Why isn't this getting the same buzz as Keanu Reeves? You know, why is it that 31,000 people buying comic books mm-hmm. is not getting any traction at all? The, 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 whole, co- the whole idea of it. Well, what do you, what do you mean by traction? Yeah. Well, the <laughs> fact Keanu that, what, yeah, well, you see, but that's the thing, though, is that, yeah. like, why why yeah. was Keanu Reeves so, like, heralded as some kind of, oh, a savior of comics? Oh, and then you have, and, and, and you have, you know, this campaign raising $2.5 million on a comic. I mean. And nobody really, I don't hear any, like, talk about it. People know who Neil Gaiman it's, are. Or is excuse oh, me. Pe- 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 right. Yeah, <laughs> just keep going. People know yeah, who that game is know, in know. the comic book group. It's just that he's but, not. He's not Kenny Reeves. Yeah. 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 Neil Gaiman uh, isn't uh, isn't uh, murdering uh, four hundred people per movie. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's the difference. You know, but, not, not but yeah, but the thing is, though, like, as Jose said, thirty-one thousand people. Well, we'll see when comics. season three hits. <laughs> You know, well, it, it's a recognizable property to start with. It, it, I didn't even realize that Gaiman was associated with the book. I just assumed it was Colleen Duran pulling in that that kind of attention, plus the name of the property. Yeah, so, no, the, the, the series yeah. is really good. Yeah, it's him and Terry Pratchett. They wrote they wrote a prose okay. novel years ago. Yeah, yeah. The two of them, mm-hmm. and you know, they released a book. The book was a good book. Mm-hmm. They did the TV show and now they're doing the comic and it's just yeah. like okay and and the TV show like like Randy said is very good I enjoy it yeah yeah Terry you know, Pratchett's it's always good it's fun show yeah yeah and but it's one of these things like Daphne just said like you know like why is it that no one like it's actually I think uh, surpassed how much Berserker made right yeah I believe so I think yeah so. I think yes. Berserker made yes, two point yes. one or two point two million. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. two point five, and it's nowhere near done. It's got a three more days. It'll it might get up to three million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably will. You know, everybody I mean, everybody I, was mad at Berserker because it didn't have any vowels in the title anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, how else were they going to trademark it? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I, I think that I mean, is it's Keanu Reeves is he's just a an international superstar to where a lot of one point four a lot of. Uh, mm-hmm. The regular people, the, the the non-comic community, the non-comic crowd, could latch on to something like Keanu Reeves, 
I mean, you go out there and you're like, and you tell the comic community, hey, Neil Gaiman's going to be here. Everyone's going to be like, oh my God, it's going to be Neil Gaiman. It's going to be so cool. But my buddy down the streets is going to be like, who the fuck is this guy with the crazy yeah. hair? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. True enough. I mean, Sean, you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, well, for one, if it wasn't for the show first, for all of the non-comic readers in the first place, I don't think it would have done as well. Because, uh, I mean, Neil Gaiman is huge in our world in comics, but um, but before that show and his other shows, um, he wasn't as widely known to the regular person. In books and comics, right. yes. but um, And I think also with like the, the media and everybody latching on to Keanu Reeves, it was because, hey, this actor is going to write a comic now. He's changing the way everyone sees things or, or something like that. Neil Gaiman, he's been you know, writing comics for forever. So maybe the, the media isn't latching onto it as much because, oh, he's writing another comic, even though it's huge, like I said, in our world, but not so much in, in the regular media anyways. Gotcha. Yeah, precisely. Right. Neil Gaiman isn't a personality outside outside of books of comics sorry well yeah outside of comics and books if it were for example stanley he was a personality outside of comic books every they saw his face everyone knew knew who he was neil gaiman doesn't uh, do that sort of himself so if he could maybe he would be making much more who knows he's much more modest on that on that aspect so yeah I Kenny think Reeves having is, Terry Pratchett on that book Kenny Reeves probably, can probably, get probably helped a lot. <laughs> I mean, having Terry Pratchett on your book couldn't hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's like that that one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, who, who was the, 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 the guy that wrote the, uh, the – he was the spiritual successor to the Wheel of Time guy. And, oh, uh, Brand, was that Brandon Sanderson? Oh, Brand, Brian, yeah, Brandon yeah, Sanderson. Made like, Sanderson. Made like $4 million on mm-hmm. Kickstarter and broke 40. the whole system. Uh, yeah. yeah. $40 million. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm talking like in the first few hours, he made oh, $4 yes, million. Yes, dollars yes, and yes. broke yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, that was crazy. That was nuts. But you I know what? I think he holds the record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy, you got any thoughts on it? On what? Oh, on uh, the whole thing with, like, Neil Gaiman and, like, you know, why is it no one's... uh, Well, like I said, it's just just such a nice product in general, and it's a recognizable outside of the the comic market. It's not, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves sitting on a a toilet making a video about how comics are awesome. (laughs) So, uh, you know, plus uh, the the thing that drew me to the project was Colleen uh, Duran, because it's nice to see her getting a a high visibility project like this, because she's really good. So. I mean, the ironic thing about it is that the only reason they're on Kickstarter because no publisher would touch it, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, doesn't make yeah. sense to me. But that's yeah. I'm not it's a public, or well, I'm not a book publisher. So it's a Terry Pratchett in the book. I, I would I would have figured a way out to publish it if they would have came to me. I'd have been like, yeah, I'll fucking mortgage my house. I don't care. Considering the quality <laughs> of some of the James Patterson graphic <laughs> novels that I've seen, I don't know why a publisher wouldn't have jumped at it. Yeah, I really yeah. don't. Yeah, I think they because I think they're saying it's going to take two years for it to get completed. Mm. Like that's how long it's going to take her to fully, mm. you know, render it out. Yeah. Um, and it, they probably just didn't want to pay her, you know, the upfront fee, you know, for her to sit down and just do it. Yeah. I mean, which is, you know, and now I'm pretty sure they're all going. Damn. It, oh yeah, that no, she said out. that after the Kickstarter, Oops. you yeah. know, <laughs> started make really making numbers, publishers started coming to her. I'm sure oh, she's yeah. got a couple I'm of sure. offers already, and it's like, oh, hey, yeah. you're successful, I guess. Let's get yeah, some exactly. of that money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do we get money? a cut of money? that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, smell How, a little how can bit I get my hand green. in your pocket? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere, you know. yeah. Somewhere out there, there's a publisher that's really regretting a bad call. <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely yeah. an editor who's like smacking the shit out of themselves. Um, but Michael, Michael has an interesting question. He says, "Are there positive or negative aspects to, of simultaneously crowdfunding on different platforms for the same project?" Uh, well, one Kickstarter doesn't allow it. Yeah. Right. Unless you do something distinctly different, 
with the book, like say like if you want to run the same project on Indiegogo, uh, it has to have something completely different from the Kickstarter or else oh. Kickstarter will ban you. Yep. Right. And then you can't cross promote them either. Yeah. Right. And um, wow. the real yeah. problem comes in the, in, in the, in the, in the fact that you're splitting your, your backers and your audience at the time you want to try to get them all in one location at a time that way you can at least when you're crowdfunding you want to get them all in one location at a time and then you can move on to the next crowdfunding platform or the next crowdfunding platform and then the next crowdfunding mm -hmm. platform if you want to do it that way mm -hmm. um but putting them all up at once that would that would probably not be a good plan I think I've only ever seen the Common America guys do it. And I well, think they do like hundred thousand dollar campaigns. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. They could do whatever yeah. the fuck they want. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. But yeah, but they're the only ones that I've ever really seen do it. So. Um, but yeah, I would always suggest like do yeah. one. Yeah. Wait till it's done, then do the other one. Mm -hmm. That's what I would suggest. It's just I wouldn't do them at the same time. Because then also you're. You're going to be splitting your time promoting two separate platforms at the same time, so it's not really going to make much sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Randy, uh, yeah, come over. The, the risk I Kickstarter, see. Kickstarter, but come over to come over to Indiegogo yeah. and back it. And oh. People get confused. Oh, I'm sorry, Guido. What were you going to say? He's still on a delay. Yeah. No, uh, I was going to say that the only risk that I see. Uh, well, I wasn't aware that Kickstarter doesn't allow it. That's new for me, so thanks. Me either. Mm -hmm. uh, there, is, there is a very latent risk that uh, Kickstarter doesn't have flexible goals. So if you, if there are people that instead of backing the Kickstarter are backing you on Indiegogo, you do not reach your goal on Kickstarter. You do not, you do not get paid on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a latent risk there. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's not it's not wise, and for um, many reasons, all the, all the ones that mm -hmm. we pointed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I would also say do it on Kickstarter first, get whatever funding you get, and then go on something like Indiegogo, one of the other platforms that'll allow you a flexible goal. Mm -hmm. So then whatever you got, you know you're producing the book anyway. So then that yeah. way, you know whatever those fans order, they're gonna get. Yeah. You know? So. And I believe Fund My Comic will let you take those totals from the other platforms mm -hmm. and and announce it on your campaign so that folks looking at the campaign will know it's definitely going to be coming out. Right. So. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Randy, you got a question? Mm -hmm. now, I was pulled into this at the last yeah, minute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Me too, <laughs> Me too sir. Me too. <laughs> I'm learning. I, I'm learning as everybody's talking. I haven't looked at the. I, the only other campaign that I've run is on was on Indiegogo, and mm -hmm. uh, that was a couple of years ago before I went down uh, on my little vacation. And uh, I had a, nothing but uh, uh, well, outside of the person I was doing it with, had nothing but a good experience on it. So I can't, mm -hmm. um, you know. The, the only other campaigns I've done have been over on uh, at Fund My Comic. And that one was the that one the full campaign was low because I didn't market it enough. I didn't get out there enough and promote it. And I was really just looking to see, you know, what I what I would get. Hoping just to get enough to cover the coloring anyway on that book. So the next one will be a lot more vocal. But uh, I really don't have a, a firm question. I think we've covered your we've answered your query there at the start about wanting to be in different different programs and or be on different platforms and try to find as many different distribution systems as possible to get your product out in front of as many many eyes as you can so for sure all right cool well listen i, I got a question for everybody right cool so here's <laughs> thank <one>. you <laughs> no problem <laughs> oh here's one that, that again i've been i i've been sitting around navel gazing for some reason so what is your true goal in comics right now when i say that right they're different things so i'll give my answer first right just so you can try to understand where i'm going with this like for some it's money for some it's fame for some it's fortune right but what but is that really your true goal right when i sit down and write right my true goal is 
is I like to envision places I've never been. I like to close my eyes and see worlds I've never been to, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I, I have this conversation with Daphne all the time. I will go and see a crappy movie and it'll have nice visual effects mm -hmm. and I don't care it's a crappy movie because yep. I just saw some interesting visuals that have stimulated a portion of my brain that I was not able to stimulate on my own. Mm -hmm. Right. And I and if I want a good story, I will go right when I will go write my own. OK, but that other portion I can't do. So that's a part of my goal in comics. Right. Is to create these worlds that are like beyond anything that I know for myself. Right. So I, and I share, though, and I share that. So that is like my goal in comics. That's mm -hmm. one of them. Obviously, mm -hmm. we have multiple goals. Right. But that's one of them. So tell me. What is what is like one of these other goals other than the obvious, rich, famous, blah blah. You know what whatever these obvious goals are, right? What are the, what are these other goals that you might have when you're actually producing work? What what is it something that you're looking to do? Um, I guess Sean, you're up. Yeah. Um, so with with my stuff, I mean, just starting out, I just had this idea and I just had to get it out somewhere. Um, so I just wanted to be able to expand on, um, my whole idea and just continue on just the, the process. And really another thing too, is just show my kids, Hey, you can do anything you want. Um, I mean, that's a big one for me right now is completing this first book. Look, you know, you can do, you can't have anyone tell you, you can't do something. You can do anything you want in the world. And, um, and there's a way to do it. You just have to work hard at it. And that's, that's the goal. And of course, I want um, just everyone to, to see my idea and have that aha moment uh, like I've had for, you know, two decades of reading comics of that, that most amazing book ever. I want someone else to see my book and think the same thing. See, that's good. I like that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Guido, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, um, aside of the, from the obvious that you stated, yes, I want to uh, create something that people love. I want to make them la laugh and cry, uh, get thrills, whatever. Um, aside from uh, the joy of creating, I, I really want to, uh, how, how can I put it? I want my books to be something that uh, sticks in the in the collective mind, something that uh, gets people's uh, gears grinding on and and trying to uh, something like getting the fans to expand upon the stories that I create uh, themselves. It's, for example, how can I say it? Uh, I want fans to start wondering and making up fan theories and whatever, uh, possibly not the Possibly, maybe not not the um, X-rated um, fairy fan arts, but other than that, yes, I want fans to uh, look at my stuff and say, "Hey, uh, I think this relates to this," or "Why why is this why is this guy doing that?" Oh, I think he, I think on the other issue, he did something that might indicate that this is how he responds to these situations. I want people to start wondering and coming up with their own explanations and and maybe coming back to me and asking me, hey, uh, why is this happening? And then I can just make stuff on the on the run. And that's how uh, that's how the um, fanfare expands. Right. Uh, I don't know. I just want I just love uh, being part of the of the world. Uh, where uh, the fandom uh, contributes to all of this, and and I want that to happen to my stories. It's it's weird, but yeah, I I just love being part of that of the wondering what goes on, what what the hell was the writer thinking? Uh, okay, mm -hmm. then yes, uh, ask me, and I'll tell you what the hell I was thinking or why as why I think. Or I can give you, you maybe an explanation for this, for that. Yes, sure. And maybe the in the future, I want, uh, I want to create something that evolves. That's, I guess, that's what I, 
what I wanted to round up. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, right. Sorry. I I branched it. I branched out a lot, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the general idea. I want to, I want my story to evolve thanks to the to input feedback from the fans. That's it. All right. Cool. That sounds. Yeah. You you want to create another Cthulhu mythos. <laughs> Go. Or, you're gonna end up just... or you're going to end up fodder for Rule 34. <laughs> <I wish. laughs> there you go. I just like Matt. telling stories, man. I mean, I've been a yeah. forever dungeon master. I've been a game master, dungeon master for 35 years now. So I've been telling stories forever. I've been a writer for 20-some years. Um, and being able to do it visually, it was... It was a no-brainer being able to just be able to take things that I've written and give it to an artist and say, hey, make this happen, and then see what they do with it. And it's just, you're just like, this is fantastic. I just created something out of nothing. Something I thought of now exists as a piece of paper in a book in my hand, you know? So I can do this now, and I can show visually what i really have been trying to tell you for the last 20 years <laughs> i can visually show you what i was talking about and it, it i think it helps with uh people connecting to the material hmm. having the visual representation of it all because i mean we've been drawn on cave walls since thirty thousand years ago so at least visu visuals are 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 important to people. We were drawing before we we were drawing before we created fire. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Randy, what are your thoughts? Well, for me, it's uh, just a. Uh, I fell in love with the art form when I was a kid. It. Uh, I really attribute the art form to keeping me somewhat sane, uh, growing up and going through life in general and the the basic hazards of of uh of life and maturity but comics for me are the ultimate form of expression the ultimate form of communication it's nothing else that uh i'd want to do is that combination of words and pictures that's why I'd, i like to do a lot of different things in a lot of different genres almost a scattershot uh type of thing because there's so many different things you can do with this medium and a lot of it has either not been done or, or hasn't been done in decades and it needs to return. We need to have the variety uh, out there that you see in manga. We need to be able to reach the audience, the uh, uh, younger kids audience like dog man and, and cool cat comic club does. That's, that's what I'm, I'm there for. When they did this hashtag about comics broke me, I want, I was trying to do another hashtag that said comics saved me. Because mm -hmm. that's how I feel about comics. If it and and if there's somebody out there who enjoys a story or who loves a, a particular character or a, or a series that comes up to me at a con and tells me that uh, they they read the book, they understood the book, they loved the book, that's more important to me than gold. I'm telling you. Oh well, yeah. That's the mm -hmm. way I look at it. Nice, Daphne. Oh, it's either that or it manifests, or, or everything in my head manifests as a mental illness. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you do this or, or go nuts. Yeah. Also, um, I got addicted oh, to adding to this pile. There you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, so it's like, you know, it's like, I kind of like want to keep going. <laughs> I just add yeah. to it. Can't stop. Can't stop. Yeah. It, it's like, um, uh jd is in the chat and he's saying it's like Coping mechanism. How, how are we prepared to pivot right if kickstarter ceased functioning tomorrow and it's like um <laughs> i i would just keep adding to the pile <laughs> That's yeah, right. yeah. it's a find another way have... there's there's always yeah. got to be another way yeah it's a good yeah. thing you brought it up because because i was shadow banning him indigo oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the comic <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah like for me it's it's finishing my books you know it, it's like especially lately i i've just been in kind of like this really weird um <laughs> this really weird um very aware of mortality kind of thing and it's just kind of like yeah. 
not a good, it's, it's not a good look, but you know, it's just like, you know what? I got to finish these books. I got to finish these books. And it's kind of like, that's kind of what's pushing me forward uh, mm -hmm. at this moment. And it's like, you know, yeah. So if Kickstarter disappeared tomorrow, it's like that train is still moving. <laughs> so. I, I got a bucket list right there. Yeah. A list of projects yeah. that I already have to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it Memento is. Memento Mori. Yeah. Is what Memento it is. Memento Mori, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I got one of those. Yeah. Um, so Daphne, pull them up. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Let's see. Look right, at that. Cool. It's the Out of Obscurity Anthology, Arrow Comics, group of talent resurrecting, uh, rebooting a bunch of um, public domain characters like Solomon Kane and Korak. And I thought that was $1.4 million to start. Uh, yeah, I know. For a second, I thought that. <laughs> I was no, like, no. Jesus. Way to go, Randy. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Uh, our, our goal on this is low. It's an anthology book. We, we're not walking into this with you know, huge expectations, but it is a fun product. Uh, I didn't even know I was a part of it until Luke called me up and said, Hey, your monkey's going to host this book. So I, I need some <laughs> illustrations. And I says, well, I'll tell you what, if we hit the goal uh, our, of our goal, I'll throw another story in there. Cause I've had a story gnawing away at me that uh, involves the golden age daredevil and silver streak that I've wanted to do for a while. And this has got a, a, a great collection of stories. Some, some, old, old characters, some just <clears throat> accidentally falling into public domain characters, some other great, just just fun stuff. There, It's all a collection of self-contained stories using these characters to try to bring them out of obscurity and uh, back into the limelight. And who knows where these properties and these characters will go from there. And the monkey narrates everything. So nice. he's the host. <laughs> a little angry monkey named Spank. <laughs> so and there he is it's a golden age daredevil yeah nice. we've got more stuff we've talked about adding to the campaign and alternate cover and uh maybe adding more stories right now it's looking at about 100 pages total uh so we we don't know exactly where it's going to end up and it all depends on you know how much more we generate we have three days left to go on the main campaign. We've passed our goal. We're at like 122%. And uh, we're just going to keep going from there. That's all you can do, man. All you keep can do. Trucking. Yep. And if this one uh, turns out to be really successful, there's a lot more where that came from. So. <laughs> That's over at Fun My Comic right now, Out of Obscurity. Just look for it. You can run the trailer if you want. It's got the monkey in it. Luke spent a little bit of time and did some animation sound, on it. I think it's my sound fun. should should work. My, my sound should work. So it's... And it doesn't. No. 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 Just a couple of just a couple monkey drawings, yep. and uh, showing off the stuff. The bronze terror. <laughs> And that's an old Lev Gleason property. The Golden Age Ghost Rider. Great Western. Solomon Kane from uh, Robert E. Howard. And that kind of ties into another project I'm working on right now with Russ Leach that'll, that will be running a campaign here for shortly. Korak, Son of Tarzan. Just a just a combination of different uh, different characters. Super old guy, <laughs> some uh, you know old superhero dude, and uh, the the Tower of Time forgot. I'm not exactly sure where that's from, but uh, Spank will be introducing it. So it's got an interesting little anime look, yeah. and the clock. This is the first uh, kind of pulp character to make the transfer from pulp magazines to comics. So it's an old time pulp adventurer character, all in out of obscurity. Nice. I like the logo too. Yeah. Yeah, that That's was Luke. So good. Luke Stone did that. Luke Stone's been coordinating all of this. He's got the talent together. He's been uh, putting it all together. 
And like I said, he calls me up when before, right before the campaign started. Hey, send me some pictures of your monkey. I'm going to animate it, and you're going to host our anthology. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I think I figured out uh, what's going on on my end. So, so uh, I apologize for not having sound on it. Although right. I heard the entire thing, and it was really just funny. an angry so, monkey talking. Yeah, just yeah. an angry monkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically said everything I did. So, yeah. Thanks for showing it off. Take a look at it, folks. It's over at Fun My Comic. <clears throat> Excuse me, FunMyComic.com. While you're over there, take a look at the Fool campaign. That's still up and available while we fulfill it. So we've got copies in house. It looks beautiful. I'm uh -huh. really proud of it. It's got some great colors by Patrick Gama in it, and it it just turned out really good. Patrick's already colored another book for me that I'm lettering right now. We'll do a campaign for in a little bit and then i'm working on another project oh. with russ leach that we'll have out shortly that's the uh the very first sword and sorcery american sword and sorcery tale that'll be in a large graphic novel it's going to run uh i think it's 68 pages it's a great great fun story are you still having problems with the uh, audio no no you want me to play the video again Oh, you don't sure. have to. It, it basically said everything that I told you, but right. yeah. want to listen to my answers. angry monkey voice. Okay, there you go. See. Yeah, yeah I think I, okay, yeah. Where, where is he? Oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. There we, there are. we go. Oh, there we are. And now All right, so let's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty sure it will work now. So let's see. There we are. Yep. I wonder the, what this go. one's about. <laughs> The cameraman would hold still, you could read that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's scared. <laughs> the zombies are coming. Mm -hmm. No, but this is Ninja Bimbos versus Zombies from Deep Space, issue number three. This is the, the time when the girls actually come in contact with the uh, the mysterious stranger that saved them. And she basically tells them that they're out of their league and they need to come with her if they want to live. That's what the line there. See, I put a, I put a line from Terminator in every mm -hmm. one of my comic books. <laughs> <laughs> and come with me if you want to live is 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 in the in the book so then they end up uh having to go through she ends up killing more zombies because you can't ever have enough zombie gore and then uh the girls are determined that this girl's probably their best chance of survival so they need to stick with her and then they end up heading back to her dojo was where they end up running into more zombies. So you can't ever have enough zombie killing in your in your zombie in your, in your bimbo zombie book. That's basically a B movie. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is this is our B movie comic book. So it's it's uh, it's super fun to write because you can do whatever you want with it, and it doesn't have to take itself too goddamn seriously. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where you're just like, I want uh, a crazy homeless guy to accost these girls in the middle of a of a, of a zombie apocalypse, and I'm going to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> those are our, the, the 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 not safe for work prints, which you get when you purchase the not safe for work cover. Nice. Any any not safe for work cover that you get comes with those prints because we just throw them all in the back of the, the the bags when we bag and board the prints. You can get it on digital, either way. And then you're not safe for work or safe for work. And then we've got just all sorts of combo collections that you can grab up. That's got all our all our other properties in it. It's got ketchups. It's got the full Mary machine gun ketchup, which is 
the entire first story arc of Mary Machine Gun. Then you got everything that we've ever done. <clears throat> and they're all cover A's. And then we got some add ons like a calendar for 2024. Those are six pictures. Uh, we've got six more that are done. We're just not showing them to you because you got to buy the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have reached the, the secondary card to be released. So Micah's card is released, and we're about halfway from four to 5,000 to get Leah's card released. And then we've got Rachel's card next. And Elsie Fritas' uh, bookmark. And then Fran, the guy who did the, the pencils for the book and the inks, Fran Cord, that's his his uh, sticker there. And then we've got the poker chip that we do every time because everyone loves the poker chip. Book's finished, and we're going to print it through uh, Comics Wellspring as soon as we get the money from Kickstarter. So it's bang, bang, just roll it around again. Just do what we do. Fulfill comic books. Nice. Now, um, this is uh, how many for the year so far? That we've done so far? Mm -hmm. uh, I think seven. Nice. And how many more left? At least two, maybe three. Okay. Cool. So, I mean, we've, we've still got... We've got Human Hunters 4, which is coming out for sure. And then... Uh, uh, Love and Madness, which should be out for sure. Um, we've got a card game that we're working on with Chris Brown that will be will be crowdfunding. Well, that's based on Ninja Bimbos. It's a uh, it's the core of a card game that's got that's got a whole bunch of different characters, and the Ninja Bimbos are are the core of the characters that can be used for the for the card games. Uh, it's a battler game where you can fight each other or you can fight a big bad together cooperatively so it's actually pretty fun we played it a few times just over the internet over stream yards and it was really interesting we, i liked it a lot but yeah the art looks fantastic everything looks good so colors are sweet i mean colored by uh adam ramos and uh lettered by sk super dude sk is a great guy so, go ahead and pick it up. We're already halfway to 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 being done with the with the campaign. We're a little over halfway actually done with the campaign now. And uh, I'm thinking, here's a question for you: mm -hmm. campaign length, two weeks, right. three weeks, or the full thirty days? Because I'm mm -hmm. thinking of going to two weeks. Um, I'm doing three weeks on this current one. Uh, that's what we do. That's what we've been doing lately, but yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, the next one after this is going to be two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But so, it's it's just all experiment. But I'm also doing another one that's going to do the full thirty days. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So it's just I'm just experiment. Well, hold on. I, I got something. Uh, I don't know if uh, Epic Fantasy is just uh, trolling, but this is kind oh, of funny. Oh, the thing is, I know. I I actually I'm kind of glad he brought that up. Well, yeah, of course. You yeah. Know? Crowdfunding is terrible. It's just an excuse for ill-disciplined people to not do the work. All right. I don't think any of those people are here on this panel. Yeah. Uh, all our books, <laughs> all our books this, are done. But, but this comment is, is the issue. Bad mm -hmm. precedents right. have been set, and that is what's followed far too often. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And then he also has uh, exports all the risk to the customer backslash victim. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a conversation that that me and Jose went back and forth with is that, you know, my my whole thing and, and I'm sure, you know, because even Max put it on on his campaign as well, is that I don't do a campaign un unless my book is finished. No book, mm -hmm. no campaign, period. Correct. Um, and I didn't think that that was too controversial of of an opinion. Uh, I mean, right. the campaign that I'm running now, the proof is right here. I, I've mm -hmm. it's, it's proof, it's done, it's ready to go. But I have gotten so much pushback on on that idea, and mm -hmm. and I think that Epic Fantasy kind of like touches on that. That it's like you know what it is is that 
a lot of yeah, a lot of ill-disciplined people. They want to, they they see crowdfunding as an easy way to make money, and then the next thing you know, you're not seeing a book if at all. You know, for like, you know, for years. I mean, it's like, and and we're talking about, we've seen actual professionals do this. You well, know, <laughs> we've had this conversation too. Yeah. I yeah. think we put too much pressure on those people that come from Marvel and DC who have titles that we refer to as professional. Yeah. Because but, they may be a professional artist. Uh -huh. They may be a professional writer or yeah. a colorist or something or letterer, but they're not necessarily professional comic book creators yeah. in the sense yep. that they don't know how to publish. They don't know how to manage time. They don't know how to, um, mm -hmm. you know, align with a printer or or a shipping company or all these other different things that we, all these different facets of the business that we have to deal with. You understand? So when one of these people come in and they call themselves a professional, I always have to sit back and be like, uh huh. We'll right. see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll that, see. It's like yeah, and, and it's like it, it really, you know, that and that conversation really changed. I really had to change my thinking. You know, of, of like just because someone is on kick doing a Kickstarter doesn't mean they're professional enough to see it to the end. Right. Um, right. Yeah. It's like I've been I look, it's like, yeah, I've I've been burned on Kickstarter, too. And I know mm -hmm. that for a while Indiegogo was infamous for it, mm -hmm. you know, and and it's just yeah. And, and the thing is, though, it does make us all look bad. I mean, I shouldn't have to say my book is done and ready to ship as a selling point yeah. but it's that bad out there that it is a selling point right that's like that i can that i can say it's like well my book ships three to four weeks after the campaign ends so you can pledge with confidence i mean it's ridiculous that we have to say that mm -hmm. you know but, but yeah it's like you it know, is a selling point it is a selling point and i think that too that and i think also too is that too many of these people they use kickstarter's verbiage of how this is this is you know it's like a this is not a sales platform <clears throat> that's to protect kickstarter it doesn't yep. absolve the creator from mm -hmm. the responsibility of creating the project that they're crowdfunding mm -hmm. but they use it as that Yep. It's like, well, you're taking a risk. It's like, no, we shouldn't have to take a risk. This is comics. We know how the sausage is made. We know that it's not difficult to do. And if you're running a campaign and all of a sudden it's like, you know, all of a sudden it's complicated. It's like, nah, you never should have been on the platform to begin with. Yep. Yep. Well, and here's the thing, though. It is complicated to do. The problem is, it's easy for us because we've done it so many damn times that it's easy. Right. Because we, you know? we make it look easy. It's not that you know it's what? easy. Right. But you know easy. what? But these people who who do that, who it's like, you know, they come on to kick crowdfunding and then it's like, and then don't release their book. You know, it's like a 32 page book should not take five years. I agree. Yep. You know? That that is just somebody, yeah, who just yeah, they're not doing the work. They're ill disciplined no. and they're not doing the work. I agree, mm -hmm. Epic Fantasy. Yes. Uh Daphne, pull up uh Sean's campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Which uh which one is that? Uh the fog uh, within. The fog, uh, the fog within. within. Here we go. Okay. I have all these tabs open. Please excuse me. <laughs> her her computer is far better than mine. Mine would just right. start choking. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> Well, first I want to say, since I'm the new guy, um, it's not 100% complete, but I <laughs> made sure that uh, the pencils were done before the pre-launch was even started. Um, and the inks are pretty much at the end and colors are right behind them. Letters are up to page 15 out of 24 already formatted and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely don't want to be that guy because I couldn't live with myself if I was. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping by the time that the Kickstarter is complete um, and the three weeks, uh, you know, when the payment comes through, that it'll be done and I'll be able to start um, going to Comics Wellspring for the entire book and and be way ahead of schedule. Um, I put December on there, but I want to give me that, you know, that time. Yeah, if always, always give yourself extra time. Yeah. Yep. So I'd rather do have it done early and everybody's surprised than be late. Um, uh, so yeah. You want me to to run the uh, the video? I'm I'm pretty sure my sound still holds. <laughs> <laughs>
if you want. Um, sure. It's just images of the uh, of the book itself. Blood rave. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the fog within. Uh, it's a dystopian sci-fi uh, book. Um, it's also got some powers in it as well. Um, basically, the idea came. Um, I was on a run and saw some fog in the morning, and thought, if I went through that fog, and what if I was in a different uh, place? What would it be like? And this is what exploded in my brain, basically. Um, and I started the whole process of figuring out how to outline the whole book and the Kickstarter process and just be a creator in general and everything. Um, but the fog within, uh, so basically in the present, there's a catastrophic event. Uh, it's some kind of strange uh, nuclear attack no one's taking the credit for. And a um, little bit after that, um, our main character, Hunter, uh, he was the one in that, that first cover. Uh, he is, um, he goes through fog and all of a sudden ends up here and his journey, figuring out what the heck is going on is also the reader's journey to understand this new world where there's an overlord, um, and there's rebels trying to take on that guy. Um, and there is a uh, prophecy as well of someone coming through this fog that's supposed to be the savior of everyone. And he has no idea what they're talking about. Um, so there's a, the big thing in, in this one is um, is the rebels and they're uh, they're working together um, and uh, in the the second cover um, up at the top um, there's a, a rebels uh, variant and um, they they don't go by their real names anymore when they're in the, the elite squad it's uh, alpha uh, is the the big brute type guy and then there's epsilon. Um, she's great with the sniper and you don't want to mess with her. And then, um, there's a guy named Zeta. He's a younger guy. He's more using his, his brain and technology, um, to, uh, to fight the, uh, the swarm with it, which is the, uh, the militia, um, the soldiers that are controlling this, this area where this nuclear attack happened. And the, everything is based 26 years into the future. Uh, what hunters has missed? Yeah, so that um, if you go up a little higher to the the cover, I can display a little bit more too. And the there's a big part of it is uh, is mystery uh, with uh, who in the first issue at least of who the the overlord is the the villain. Um, so this is the villain cover right here. Um, if you go back a little further down. Oh. Uh, so that's the uh, the villains. Uh, you got Hunter in the middle, um, but you've got um, the villain in the middle that you don't know um, who he is until the end of the book. And uh, the swarm is the um, the, the militia up top um, left. And then you've got the other uh, characters um, with him. And then if you go further down, the, uh, the Rebels variant, uh, which is by Raymond Lee, uh, which he was great to work with. Um, so you've got Alpha on the right, uh, with his, what I've been calling basically a futuristic brass knuckles, um, type weapon. And then, uh, Epsilon to the left, uh, she has, um, blades and, uh, a huge sniper. And then, uh, Zeta's at the bottom left. He has, uh, drones that he uses, um, that also has his own personality, uh, named Addy, um, artificial detachable intelligence. Um, they go on to him, but they also do their own thing. He can control um, with his little remote device on his arm. And uh, Cole is in the um, the bottom right. He's like the leader of the uh, the rebels, trying to keep these um, these guys together. So 
Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> nice. How many more days do you have left on the on the um, campaign? So I had two weeks. Got uh, thirteen days. Oh, did yeah. You already um. It's it's really tiny. Am I? Is it, did you already fund? Not yet. So right. Yeah. It's at twenty five hundred gold. gold. Okay. Yep. About eight hundred dollars more. All right. I th listen, I don't see any reason why you. I think you, you're not gonna have a problem making that. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you'll be able to do it in 13 days. Not an issue. <clears throat> yeah. Very nice. It's been great. I've enjoyed all the, the people in the group. Uh, David Dion, he's been my penciler the whole time. I, I fell in love with his stuff as soon as I saw it. Um, I've got uh, Sandro. Uh, he is my inker, and then I've got uh, Josh Rodriguez as my uh, colorist. And um, I've got, uh, his name's Justin from Letter Squids. He's the uh, the letter formatter designer. Um, and everybody's been great. So love the process. Cool. <clears throat> uh, Epic Fantasy has been uh, blowing up the chat. No, He's, no, uh, yeah. and it's like no, nobody, look, I know, <laughs> I don't think you're trolling. I don't think you're trolling at all. I mean, honestly, it's like, look, I'm salty, still salty. I don't know who's waiting two and a half years trolling for a book. You know that the only reason it came out late was because the publisher said the artist didn't have time to put it together. You know, it, yeah. it's like, no, these are not professionals. These no. these are not professional people. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it, it's exactly. like. No. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, but also, I think it, it looks like he's running on a delay too. So, yeah, it definitely yeah. looks like he's running. Yeah, he's on a running delay, on a yeah. delay. So, yeah. but he's yeah. he, he makes it. You, uh, Epic, you're making a lot of good points. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that yes. Well, he's I would like, uh, he's yeah. from YouTube, so, so yeah. He, um, looks like YouTube Daffy, is Paul, going. Paul yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, and this one doesn't have a video. <laughs> So Guido, uh, walk us no, through. Yeah, it. sorry. Uh, yes, no videos. So, yes, of course. Um, well, so Night is a, is a fantasy themed uh, superhero book. It's basically this uh, street level vigilante with uh, a mysterious origin. I'm not going to reveal it right away. Instead, I will leave uh, breadcrumbs for uh, readers to make up their own their own stories and who knows in the future they might be right they might be wrong and why am i saying it's a fantasy theme because well the the characters and the villains will all have a, a will all be based on uh, figures from from uh, fantasy mostly medieval fantasy dungeons and dragons and and the such the main villain is the um, is a reincarnated uh, sorcerer who who, who can who's uh, scheming a big uh, ritual and basically has his minions wreaking havoc across the city. His minions include uh, are called the Praetorians and they include an assassin uh, who's called executioner, a uh, grave digger is the is the girl uh, that can raise the dead at touch and also control them sort of like a hive mind she that controls uh, reanimated corpses and then there's dragon breath it's a large monstrous man beast that on top of being uh, really strong and really fast and vicious he can also breathe fire then uh, a long night uh, is Whisper. Uh, this, uh, she was also a Praetorian but deserted and is the one that comes tonight for help. So together they will try to bring them down. This is the first uh, story arc. Um, in here you will get to meet each of these characters. You will get to understand a bit of who they are, uh, what their powers, their skills and their history and motivations are. This is the first story arc that contains four issues, um, a short story that 
sort of sets the stage for the second story arc. And also a few bonuses, such as a cover gallery and uh, special commentaries by, by series creator, a.k.a. moi. And basically, well, uh, the, main, the commentaries will, uh, will basically tell you a bit of the story behind the series, uh, the struggles uh, I, I've been facing with putting it together. And some of my uh, best wishes for, for the future. Basically, it's uh, sort of a coping mechanism as well. <laughs> you know, my own way of making catharsis. It's like mm -hmm. a self therapy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right up there with uh, stress eating and uh, fooling myself. <laughs> but yeah, that is basically how I try to get along. Uh, so, basically, the story uh, is done. There, is, there has been a, a, a comment, a question. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's done. This, uh, these books are done. The production is done. So, as soon as the funds come in, it will be, the PDFs will be out and it will be sent to print. We still have three days left. So, it's, we're right around the corner. And um, also, well, we have a stretch goal if we hit 2K. Who knows right now if we will, but if we do hit 2K, uh, there will be a free PDF bundle. If you go to updates, you can see, uh, you can see that. Uh, what else can I say about this? Well, art is uh, uh, done by Mauricio Campetella. He, uh, he's worked on several indie books uh most notably up until 2020 up until the pandemic shut things down he was the main uh, artist for the series fathom from aspen comics uh also well uh it, most of the book is colored by uh, marcus odoms uh the book the colors on the final chapter are by are by brian Alf arfel magnaye and basically, yeah, um, written and lettered by me. So uh, I guess that's that's as far as I can say. There will be there will be uh, some hopefully unexpected uh, plot twists, some unexpected reveals, and hopefully I can take the story in ways that will uh, surprise uh, that will surprise the reader. Not so much in a in a shocking uh, in a shocking revelation. Not it's not going to be a red wedding situation, right? I'm not going to introduce mm -hmm. a character and kill them in the very first story arc. But yeah, be prepared for some possibly unexpected developments. Uh, should a person prepare to, for a overly successful crowdfunded project to meet projected delivery shipping status goal? With some advice you have to be ready for that. Uh, I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer this. Uh, my <laughs> my Kickstarters in the past have been very moderately successful. But yes, there should be... Uh, you, Of course, you should be prepared to avoid delays. Uh, and delivery shipping goals, yeah, you need to... You need to uh, find up. Depends on whether if you're handling handling the delivery or or you have the printer do it for you. Uh, yes, uh, that that would make a lot of difference. That's the best thing I can say. Sorry. Yeah. All I right. Mean, uh, pass Should the question you to someone. Should you prepare for an overly <laughs> successful crowdfunding project? Yes. That's why you always <laughs> give yourself a little extra time. That and the yes. fact that, you know, there's always something that could go wrong. Like, yes. we didn't get a couple stickers or uh, pr uh, cards, and now we, that's going to extend our our fulfillment time by at least two weeks. At least two weeks. So, well, that's, that's why we have always give ourselves like an extra month and a half, two months, mm -hmm. just in case yeah. something, something happens. And that way people aren't upset. 
you know, oh, my book's late. My book was late. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's it's publishing. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> the real the real key thing here is, is you're never gonna be able to plan for absolutely everything, but your communication with your backers is most important. Oh yeah, that is. Key. Everybody needs to know if you have a problem. Admit you have a problem. Tell people you have a problem and then tell them what you're doing to solve the problem. And people will, believe me, people will love you and follow you even more for it because of your honesty and your transparency. True. That's what yeah. I found at least. Yeah. Um, be realistic with the goals of your book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, like I said, for me, no campaign, no book, no campaign. Um, and I think that that way too many people want to um, just jump on with like a couple of concept art or a couple of pages, and then they're going to figure out the rest as they go along. And it's like, you know what? A campaign is too stressful as it is for you to not have all your ducks in a row beforehand. Um, you know, have your printer set up, you know, have a proof in, in production, Preach, yeah. you know, you know, and, or, you know, it's like, or have it done already before, you know, you go live, you know, it's, I like have, you know, get, get kind of like your shipping together, know how quickly you're going to be able to get, you know, get your supplies in advance, you know, I mean, nothing yeah. should be left to the last minute, you know, you're doing a Kickstarter, assume you're going to fund and assume that you are going to put out this book that you're kickstarting. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, like I said, it surprises me that this is a bone of contention, but you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation, I guess, if everybody logically ran Kickstarter. And if you yeah. have an overly successful yeah. campaign, consider that what we call a happy problem. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. So what if you don't get mm -hmm. some sleep for a couple of nights while you're putting packages together? <laughs> yeah, get everything really. out as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, the thing. Here. You know you're running a campaign. You're seeing the numbers in front of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know how many backers you're going to end up with, how yeah. much, how much, so you're going to know how many supplies you're going to need, what you're going to need. Get as much stuff in advance as you can. You know, if you need to order boxes, get your boxes in advance, get your tape yeah. in advance, get your bubble wrap in advance, get your bags and boards in advance, so on and so forth. Yep. And that's yep. another thing. Don't ship anything without a bag or a board. Try to put <laughs> it in a bag or a board, <laughs> you know, <laughs> protect the books. It's very important, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah i mean you know i mean listen and and if you know you're running you're going to end up with a, having to fulfill a thousand different um pledges you know let your boss know dude yeah. i might have to take a week off <laughs> right it happens you know and it, you, if you have a thousand different packages you got to ship out that means you probably made 30 40 50 000, you know bucks yeah and like Randy said, yeah. that's a ha that's a good problem Happy to have. Problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could literally pay yourself to stay home. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I'll you take know, that hit. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more hit. than happy to take a week off. For, you know, yeah. there's some PTO in there, and you know, just yeah. take it off. Yeah, uh, I mean, the the thing is, though, it's like here here's also another thing too. Is that. I mean, it's like, look, nothing that we do, even me doing my books myself, it's not cheap. You know, it's like, you know, doing the pages, you know, get, getting pages, and especially if you have to outsource everything, you know. Now, here, here's the thing, though. How do you control the cost of, of making your book? Because a $20,000 campaign doesn't mean anything if you spent 15000 to make it. Make it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um I, I i think the secret to that is uh you write checks and you do this a lot <laughs> checks what's that <laughs> well or just the paypal it's really just paypal payments you just, yeah you should have paypal yeah but I, I don't know i mean you know max how do you deal with that i mean you know what do you what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts on that well like for minimizing production costs yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah how do you um, control it well i mean you find an artist that works at a level that you want to 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 produce a book at and you just accept what their rate is 
I mean, you, if you want an artist that's a two hundred dollar a page artist because they're that good, you need to go ahead and just accept the fact that you're going to have to pay two hundred dollars a page for that artist, or you could. Try your luck with uh, someone from overseas. I mean, a lot of these guys, they're super hungry, and they're from places like Nigeria, where you can pay them $45, $50 a page and get epic artwork, but they're also not really as reliable Mm -hmm. as someone that's more localized or more first world, you know, because they're working on tablets and stuff that, fell off the back of trucks and everything you know i mean i've i've been to the, i've been to iraq i know how these people get their stuff <laughs> <laughs> and if you look at their power their power grid it's all just <coughs> a mess of wires on a pole and you're just like how is this even working <laughs> so um yeah i mean you just have to accept the fact that certain rates are going to be there and mm-hmm. you have to, if maybe you have to take a, 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 a not a skilled artist or a newer artist than the artist you wanted to save money just to get the book made and then hopefully make enough money to get the artist you wanted originally. You know, I mean, for someone like you, Daphne, you're lucky you can draw it yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's it's exhausting, but yes, yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, how I say money. Your 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 artwork is only as good as you want it to be. You know, I mean, you can. I've seen you draw. I know you're doing. I know you're pretty damn good. So, oh, thank you, thank and, you and sir. The, the furry <laughs> stuff I liked. <laughs> that was a so, fun episode of House of Bob that we were on. You know, that was a fun episode. <laughs> So, Sean, I mean, you're new to the game, right? You're, you're self-financing up front. So, I mean, how are you dealing with it? Because, I mean, I, I know that initial hit is not easy. Yeah. Well, uh, I had a certain amount that I knew I could spend uh, that me and my wife talked about beforehand. So then I went for the penciler first. And once I had that, then I knew what I had to play with, you know, that's left. And uh, I just made sure to budget the whole way through keeping track of everything because, yeah, it can definitely add up real quick. I mean, I was naive when I started back in December, but uh, but I've, I've definitely been through it all, 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 all through the entire process other than printing the book, um, which I have an idea of how much that'll cost too. But, um, yeah, I had a certain amount of money that I could spend, and um, I'm going to – and I have conversations with all the guys too. So if this is not something that is exact, then I'll talk to them and say, hey, can we tweak this, can we tweak that? at any point and they're all willing. Um, so that's, that's been huge. Um, just constant communication, making sure I pay quickly so that they want to keep on going with my book. Um, being awesome. They're being awesome back. You know, it goes both ways. It makes it go a lot easier. Um, cause at any point, if, you know, if I say something wrong or, or don't pay right away, they might want to, to leave the book because they can get paid immediately from someone else. So I want to make sure everyone's happy on, you know, on both sides. So that's how I do oh, yeah. it. You got to keep everybody happy. That's, that's the, that's the project management of the entire yeah. thing is keeping everybody happy, which is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes because <laughs> artists are, are, all right, passionate people. <laughs> <laughs> to, put it, to put it mildly. <laughs> wow, yeah. and so, you're kind of like, all right, uh, really, you're upset about that? Okay, um, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Guido, uh, how did, like, obviously, you're self financing as well. So, I mean, you know, how did you go about it? How was that process of, you know, getting your artists and paying for them? How did that work out? Well, honestly, <laughs> that is that is a constant uh, challenge, you know, um, mm-hmm. having a budget and and sticking to it. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I luckily I, I I've been working for, uh, with Knights. Uh, I've been working with the same artist since we since we began. We had we had our ups and downs. There were 
there was a moment in which we said, uh, I thought, that's it, we're we're done. Let's cut our losses. But yeah, eventually we we started working together, bringing it back up again. And yeah, uh, luckily, yes, I I built. A, yeah, we've we've worked together uh, since the start uh, through good times, bad times, through delays, through times when he's asking me for more work. So, so yeah. Um, and then the rest is is a challenge to you know um, stick to the budget. Yeah, you need you need to. Uh, there's a ton of, of artists that I like and that I wish I could work with them, but and maybe one just needs to find the right time, uh, mm -hmm. because maybe my my biggest advice is if you don't see yourself being able to pay for it, uh, don't for the time being, then uh, if if you manage to pull a successful Kickstarter and and things work out and you get a, a surplus, then yeah, uh, set it aside to to work with that that artist that you've dreamed. Also, um, if that if that artist happens to have a, a following of their own, uh, uh, yeah, or uh, even better. Even better, perhaps he can bring in some some fans. Uh, you never know. So my my advice is uh, get yourself a, a budget and try to try to stick to it as far as you can. Uh, of course, it, it may also be putting a budget on your dreams, which sounds kind of harsh, <laughs> but it's also uh kind of true because yeah mm -hmm. event if not you're going to run into trouble you're going to run into issues you're going to run into money shortage you're going to have to pull money from from other uh from other sources and you you don't want to do that you don't want to do that you you definitely want to plan ahead as as much and as best as possible true Randy. Sure. Uh, literally one project at a time, baby steps. So I pay mm -hmm. my folks as they get the job done and in as small increments as possible so that I can afford it. And that's not going to, you know, hurt my other uh, income necessities, shall we say. Yeah. So one little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Daphne? Uh, well, mm -hmm. like I said, I do everything myself, so I save a lot of money that way. I mean, I pay out the ass in time. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. Um, but um, I still have to be careful with being over enthusiastic with like side things like variant covers and different papers and oh let's do all these stickers let's do metal bookmarks let's do you know it's like oh t-shirts and enamel pins and it's like um even even those little things can add up really quickly and eat away at and what, what little profit I get off of my Kickstarters uh, so far. So I really try to like really keep that fantasy aspect <laughs> very <laughs> controlled. Um, I mean, it, it's like, look, I had to give up my, my flatter uh, for the last couple of issues because I just can't afford her right now. I um, mean, it's not like she was overly expensive, but, you know, that's just what i have to do yeah it's um, the reality of the situation yeah exactly yeah. um and and the thing is though it is funny to see uh people uh, it, it, to see people uh campaigns get really um yeah over the top with stretch goals um that it's like it almost sounds like it, it, you look at some stretch goals and it's like how are you even storing all this stuff you know it's like <laughs> Um, so yeah, so for me, it's like, it's not the book itself that could cost me money, but like I said, like all the things, like all, like, like, do I really need that many stretch goals? Do I really need to create so much, uh, you know, things to give away to backers? Do I really need to do that? Does it really make a difference? So that, that's where I have to be careful. Converting from stretch goals to add-ons. 
Well, right, yeah, that's true, you know? but you could still have too much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, you're 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 still creating yeah. a new product and adding yeah. it onto the uh, to, to another product. But yeah, our enamel pens sell really, really well. I mean, we don't sell them for more than I think it's a couple bucks, yeah. but they sell really well. I'm I was really impressed with them. I mean, yeah. the first, I made them with Mary Machine Guns first issue. And we didn't really add them as add-ons because I was like, yeah, nobody liked them. Huh. And then we put them as add-ons <laughs> the last few campaigns, and we just been selling them like hotcakes. And right. I'm like, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's been ex- it's been tough recently because I, I found out about a manufacturer called Vograce, and they I, I guess like all the anime kids at the anime shows they all <laughs> use this this manufacturer. And they just do like so much, and it, like I said, it's so hard to go through the website. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. I could. And it's like, whoa, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, let's not do that. I spent you know, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How did that like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for myself, I appreciate that Guido had mentioned a budget, right? I know what that word means. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Now sticking to it, that's a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's always been my issue. I know what it means, but it, here is something though. Like Randy, I, I try to pay in small increments. Like with my artists, I'm usually uh, contracted for like one or two pages a week. Usually it's two pages. I got one artist I'm doing, I think five pages every two or three weeks. So it just depends on how you set it up with your artists. Um, I mean, look, I've said this before on other on other shows, and it's just like, look, if you want to do a book, set a budget for yourself that you can spend something weekly, you know, whether it be anywhere, you can find an artist anywhere from 50, a good artist, anywhere from 50 to $100 or 40 to $100. Set that aside for yourself weekly and just talk to an artist. And look, some of them are not going to want that deal. They're not going to want to just give you one page a week, but there's some that are because they're going to consider it steady money, mm-hmm. right? So that while... You know, they're doing, you know, they might have a bigger project. They could take on other things and they'll run you, you know, you, you'll be in the sidelines, but they'll get you your one page. You just you say, look, every Monday or every Tuesday, just uh, just give me one page and that'll be it. And then you just send them their money. And Brought a lot of them out, are happy. Half a year. Yeah. Right. And a lot of them are happy to do that because, like I said, it's steady because sometimes they'll run out of that big budget job or they'll run out of that those 50, 60 pay. They'll run through the, and then that guy who was paying them that money. They're like, well, we're done. You did. Your contract is over, but you're still there giving them money, you know, till the next till the next guy rolls up, or till the next guy rolls in. So that's one of the things that I think uh, everybody should consider. Talk to these artists. You got to talk to them because, like I said, a lot of them are open to these types of little deals, and you just don't know until you know, right? So, like I said, it's worked for me, and I and, and I have amassed quite a bit of stuff. But like I said, that thing with budget, I don't know what that is. So, Des, I don't know if you want to pull up the other stuff. Uh, Okay, well, really quick, um, let's uh, because is since JD uh, Rosario is not uh, here with us today, uh, but his campaign is still alive, so we could at least uh, talk about it uh, a little bit. So, thank you to the eighty backers uh, who have raised nineteen hundred and eight dollars so far. Uh, He's so close to his three thousand dollar goal, but there's twelve days to go, so uh, there's uh, plenty of time. But why wait? Uh, So yeah, so just really quick, like these are all. All the variant covers that he has uh, for the campaign. Um, do you know how uh, many issues this uh, this storyline is? Four. Four. So it's four, and it's like so. Here are some of the, like the variant covers, um, and like yeah, the, the interior pages um, for uh, for the uh, for this book. Also, um, he has a special card for everybody who is returning uh, from the previous campaign and backing this one. So you also get a car, a new card uh, to add to your collection. Uh, if you back again, uh, his campaigns, he also has all his uh, other previous books as well, like dragon storm and shield of the interceptor, um, everything, pretty much the entire uh, back catalog of, um, 
uh, Unstoppable Comics uh, is available on this campaign. So if you think you missed anything, no, you did not. So everything is on the campaign. So uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for that. Also, uh, for everybody who don't know, this guy up here... <laughs> <laughs> is launching a new campaign tomorrow. Uh, Magi's Grace, Sex and Monsters is his collaboration project uh, with C. Michael Lanning. Um, and it's the story of a pair of monster hunters who are tasked uh, of investigating the strange going on on a seaside town because that's where all the strange going ons always happen, mm -hmm. seem to happen yeah. at a seaside town. So that- In New um, England. Is yeah, in New England, of course, New England, coincidentally. Yes. <laughs> coincidentally. Yes. coincidentally. Uh, so also, uh, if Jose wants to talk about it as well. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> no, you're doing great. Keep yeah. going. Yeah, you're still, okay. So so we would like to thank the 64, oh, look at it go up. There you 65. go. 65. <laughs> We're talking Thank about. Thank you so much to the 65 people who have pledged the Oswald Chronicles. I was there and I remember issues one through four, um, you know, where uh, we, we're past the 1000 goal uh, already, but it's always nice to add more uh, to it. So uh, this is uh, so, uh, well, the early bird, well, Let's see. You you have enough uh, backers that the early bird special doesn't apply anymore, I think. So this is issues one through four, which completes the story arc uh, for this. Uh, um, and uh, this is uh, Oswald's for technically first adventure um, in Dream. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, drawn by Jade, Jade Gonzalez. That it has uh, several uh, variant covers as well. Does it have? Does this one have variant covers? As, this time it around? has a, It has the regular cover as a Jade cover and then one variant oh there you go and and variant covers so uh you can collect uh the all four uh issues of this series and also uh for those of you who missed uh, our botched attempt at launching a previous campaign several weeks ago um that is also on this campaign as well the first two issues of uh, the light that attracts uh, which is uh, this book right here. So the first two issues that was supposed to be a separate campaign is on this one as well. Uh, so that one, yeah. So there's a lot of books on this campaign. It's very misleading, there's a, but- there's, th there's a lot of books on that campaign. Yeah, exactly. Slight, but, slight, co slight correction. This yes. is issues one through four. It is a six issue limited series. Oh, so okay. Oh, there's two more issues to go. Okay, so issues. like I said, thank you to the 65 backers uh, with a 11 days to go. And last but not least, but almost last, <laughs> Since I'm running the board right now, might as well. Eager Raven, Air of the First Unicorn, my comic uh, is currently on Kickstarter. Thank you to the 130 backers uh, with four days to go left on the campaign. I'm trying to reach five, a lot of 5K. A lot can happen in four days. <laughs> Who knows? You know, try for the Hail Mary pass. So this is issue seven of a 15 issue fantasy uh, drama series. Um, so this is issue seven. And as I said, it is complete. I have the proof right here. This book is ready to go. Once the campaign is over, we also unlocked uh, the 3000 stretch goal postcard. Thank you so much, everybody, for that. Um, like I said, this is a fantasy series. Uh, and if you want to try it out for free... To try it out, you can download a PDF of the first 16 pages of the first issue. Um, so it, it's a Kickstarter that gives you something before <laughs> you buy. So here are the first uh, couple of pages um, of the series as well. And for those of you who like to collect uh, variant covers. Um, I do have some variant covers on here as well. Let me just get to them because I, it's a long scroll. A lot going on here. So yes, I have, these are the variant covers that I have to be careful that I don't go too crazy with. So I have uh, the main cover as a silver, as a virgin, and as a hollow uh, foil. And I also have a variant cover uh, by uh, Jaden Lanning. 
um, an, a fan favorite, uh, at least my fan favorite, uh, Jaden Lanning, and her cover comes in these three flavors as well. And I also have the infamous nude cover as well in four <laughs> different flavors because we all because we all love uh, options, don't we? So yeah, so if you are interested in uh, in any of these books, the variant covers are exclusive to the campaign. So you have to pick them up uh, before the campaign ends because they will not be available um, on my uh, on my store. Uh, they'll just I'm just only printing to order uh, from the campaign. Uh, so let me just play uh, my video really quick because I'm kind of proud of it. So <laughs> let me do that. of you who like their com their fantasy comics to be a little bit more on the sexy sexy side um i also have launching at the end of september eagle raven medieval unicorn viking slut it's a parody series uh based on uh some conan books that i was reading a little too much of and i did a parody series based on a joke on facebook that went out of control so uh this uh this is more of a mature audiences um kind of a separate alternative universe uh series that i'm currently uh finishing right now now. So this book launches on September 25th. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss this campaign uh, when it goes live, uh, just head on over to uh, Kickstarter and hit the notify me on launch and you will get an email uh, when this campaign goes live. So that's and I think uh, that pretty much it. <laughs> that's it for us. There we go. <laughs> yep. uh, Max had to go early. He had, he had right. a situation to deal with. So thank right. you, Max, there you for go. coming on. Thank you, Max. Go check out his campaign. Okay. And, uh, you know, we made it to the uh, two hours. You yeah. know, thank you guys. You guys are all awesome. Sean, Guido, yeah. Randy, of course. Daphne, thank you guys for filling in. Um, you know, Anytime. For, for, for those malcontents that couldn't make it, <laughs> um, you know, we love you, but you're still a malcontent. But anyway. Uh, Sean, where can they find you and your work, sir? Please. Uh, yeah, of course, the the Kickstarter, uh, the Fog Within number one. Um, also, everywhere else, uh, pretty much as Sean Wood underscore writer, uh, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere I can get my book out there is where I am with that name. Cool. Guido, where can they find you and your work, sir? Um, they can find me on Facebook and also on Twitter, uh, slash X, however it's called now. Yeah. So, and of course the Kickstarter or uh, on Facebook, the page dedicated to night, it's night by Guido Martinez. So yeah, all, any, all of those I'm available for messages or just to publish any news, you'll find it there. Cool. Randy, where can they find you in your work, sir? Uh, you can find me over on Facebook. Don't look for me over on Twitter. I've got an account over there, or X, or whatever they call it, but it's the bastion of hate, and I really don't like going over there that much. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> you can find all my work over at arrowcomics.store. Everything that's available is available over there, ready to ship. The full campaign over at fundmycomic.com, the Out of Obscurity campaign at fundmycomic.com. Both have works or, or will have work in it that I'm especially proud of. 
Uh, within the next couple of months, you'll see Alice in Chains over at Fund My Comic. That's a, a, a book that I've wanted to introduce to people for a long time. And uh, <clears throat> working on the uh, Shadow Kingdom with uh, Russ Leach, which will be a large graphic novel um, as soon as Russ finds it, the, the time to He's doing unbelievable work on that. Just he, He's incredible. a machine. He's he a is. machine working for just all the companies stuff. at the same time. And then after that, there's a list here that includes an Anniverse Omnibus with a backup book by of Varsals of Vixens. I've already got a story in-house by uh, Sue Van Camp of uh, Varsals of uh, Vixens. She's not sure if she's going to put another new one in there or not, but it'll have all the Vixen stories and it, all the Anniverse stories will be all collected for the first time ever in one one place, everything that we consider. I gotta, to be I gotta, planning. I gotta make some shelf space for that. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta talk to you about your time too. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, your chivious story will be in there as oh, well. Oh, absolutely, there's, yeah. There's always uh, room, always room for uh, more. So, and there's a lot more coming, folks. Just pay attention to Arrow Comics. We've got some great stuff. The AR 13L book is available over at Fund My Comic. That's more than hit its publishing goal. It's going to be a great book. Soul Tech 4 over there by Craig White, which is like a, a space opera story. Just It's just beautiful. Just some phenomenal stuff. And there's more coming from Arrow Comics in the very near future. Um, just, you know, keep an eye out at arrowcomics.store and keep watching our, our programs. I've got two shows here on the Indie Comics Network. Sunday morning at 9 a.m., Friday morning at 5 a.m., but they're all archived over at the Indie Comics Network, so you don't have to get up that early <clears throat> to watch them. But do, when you can, we have a lot of fun over there. We're going through the, uh, I don't know, I have it readily handy here. We're going through the Marvel Vault on uh, Sunday mornings, and we're going through Hogarth's, some of Hogarth's Tarzan work on Friday morning. So uh, that's what we got coming up, and there's a lot more come in there just a lot of stuff that inspires us that we love to i love to show off this stuff because like i said before it's what uh what i love to do and it it's it's what i you know it's it's the it's the um platform of communication that uh, uh i can't you know see doing anything else yeah. so we'll be doing comics until we can't so uh, also, all the all the links to every campaign that we spoke about today is also in the chat as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I at the beginning, so if you scroll all the way up to the beginning of the chat, everything is there. All the books are there. So, so Daphne, where can they yes. find you? In your work? Oh yeah. So if you want to, <laughs> yeah, that would help, right? <laughs> it's like if you can, if you want to learn more about me and my artwork and all my other nonsense, you can go head on over to my main portfolio site at egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-O-R-K-S, uh, where you can find links to all of my galleries and social media sites. But I mostly post to Facebook because the Bird app is an abomination. If you are looking into seeing sketches and current work in progress uh, and and live up updates. Um, but also, you can also find me here on YouTube uh, on my channel at Daphne Lage Art, where I do semi-weekly uh, live streams Wednesdays at 4 p.m., where I'm just drawing and talking for two hours and chatting with the chat, you know, having a good time. Um, and also, you can catch me on the Indie Comics Network as well with Nita um, on our vlog show. We're going to be doing another one uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., Mondays and Fridays at 11 a.m., but tomorrow, <laughs> definitely at 11 a.m., because we're launching Magi's Grace with this guy over here. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, catch me on, uh, I'll, uh, catch me on YouTube, catch me at my website, you know, and maybe it, depending on how it goes, catch me on Etsy too, but not yet. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. My name is JD Calderon. You can find me here just about every Sunday. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all those places in the JD Calderon, DeviantArt. And also you can find me under TheOswaldChronicles.com and TwelveTalesOnline.com. And just remember, everybody, all of the books we discussed, they're in the links in the show notes as well. So you can just click on those links, go buy yourself some awesome independent, independent comics, right? And just remember, read more comics, especially ours. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Have a good night, folks. Good night. Take care. Good night.